Our next speaker is Wayne Barry from Canterbury Christ Church University. Um, and Wayne, I'm almost certain, is talking about the iBorrow project, which coincidentally won an award, um, jointly awarded by EduServe and Usiza. Over to you, Wayne. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name's Wayne Barry. I'm a learning technologist based at Canterbury Christ Church University uh, in the, uh, the depths of the Garden of Kent. And I'd like to share with you our experiences with the iBorrow project. Um, the project was part funded uh, under the phase two of the JISC Institutional Innovation Program. And uh, as Andy just said, it was awarded the 2009 Youth Science Award for Excellence. And it's been nominated for the Times Higher Education IC Innovation Award 2010. I'd like to start, if I may, with a, a bit about the, the background uh, that led to the project. Uh, Christchurch underwent um, quite a rapid expansion in terms of its student numbers and as a consequence was sort of struggling to meet the demand and our library services uh, came under, was under subject to criticism uh, in this national student survey. So during 2008-2009 the university embarked upon uh, one of its biggest uh, building projects in its history and they were to create a large 35 million pound library and student building. Uh, and key to this was the provision of ICT for student use. Um, this, is, this is what you can see is on the fourth floor. Augustine House has approximately 12,000 square meters of open plan space that's been used for library, uh, critical student services, flexible learning space has been broken into zones such as choir area or, or group study area. We also have outside terraces. We have two cafes, uh, a 500 seat flat floor space that could be used for teaching, examinations, or conferences. I'd like to cover this, the slight technical aspect to the iBorrow. The concept of the iBorrow project is a simple one. We wanted to provide 200 think like notebook computers for student staff to use and borrow in Augustine House as easily as taking out a book from a shelf. Finding a, a low cost thin client laptop was no easy task, so we eventually settled upon the ASUS 1000 netbook. That came with an eight gigabyte solid state drive and we installed a, a lean version of Windows XP on that because at the time Windows 7 wasn't available which would have been a, the, the better option. The, the netbooks made use of the EduM wireless system to connect to Microsoft's Terminal Server 2008. This meant we were able to deliver core student software like Microsoft Office Suite, Internet Explorer, SPSS, etc. Uh, using Microsoft's application virtualization and students were able to connect to the, their, their network and their profile quite easily. As well as that, we embedded a radio frequency identification tag that allowed us to track the movement of the netbook within Augustine House, which we'd hope would tell us something about the, uh, the learner footprint. And I should be revisiting this, this notion of learner footprint a bit later on. It was clear that the location tracking on its own would not provide us with what was going on pedagogically inside that building in terms of the mobile devices that were being used and the learning spaces that were being occupied. So when Augustine House opened its doors to students and staff uh, in September 2009, we resorted to some good old-fashioned research methodologies such as surveys, interviews and observations. Uh, and as, as a slight aside, I just want to say that due to a technical glitch with our building security system, meant that we weren't able to make the iBorrow netbooks available to anybody at that time. So what you see here is a, a very fortuitous opportunity to observe how students are using the uh, Augustine House without the iBorrow netbooks. And as you can see, there's lots of red areas indicating where students are sat at fixed desktop PCs. And we have a smattering of yellow areas where um, students have bought their own laptops. The iBorrow netbooks then became available to students and staff to use in November 2009. So now we can compare this slide with the previous slide. We still have lots of people sat at the fixed desktop PCs. We still have a smattering of yellow boxes uh, where people bought their laptops. And now we have a proliferation of green boxes indicating iBorrow usage, um, which not only sort of indicates the, the take up, but also more importantly, how the space is being used. It's being used quite widely. I mentioned about the learner footprint, uh, and just to explain a bit about that, we use uh, location tracking data. Supplemented with that, we use anonymized student demographic data, so it covers things like 
age, gender, the course they're taking, how long they've been on that course, and so on and so forth. And we take snapshots every five minutes. So we've got 200 netbooks every five minutes in a day. We could be collecting something like 57,000 records, which is quite mind-blowing. Anyway, so we're collecting this data to sort of try and get a sense of the learner footprint and to try and gain some insight about how students are using spaces uh, with the netbooks and how long they spend in those spaces. So here's an example of that kind of data we are collecting. It's also used quite widely uh, across the disciplines, more than others. Uh, again, this could be down to how students, uh, or rather tutors, engage with the building and how, how the uh, students are being, being encouraged. Uh, also, subjects like education and health um, have placements, so they, they don't feature quite highly in there. Uh, this is an interesting slide that shows you how students are using the netbooks. We were sort of expecting them to be doing an awful lot of social networking, but as you can see, there's an awful lot of uh, work and learning going on, and interestingly, the Blackboard RVLE doesn't feature quite highly in there. <laughs> Some views about the students, uh, about the netbooks, uh, as you can see. Flexibility has been the, the key success factor that has facilitated better group work and collaboration. Uh, we have to take the rough of the smooth, and it's clear that uh, most students would prefer to work on desktop because that's where they do real work, um, as I like to call it. And for some, the size of the, uh, the, uh, the, the netbook had proved to be an issue. And finally, the last slide, all our technical project evaluation reports can be found on the iBo website, along with links to our project blog, Flickr site, and the presentation that were made during our national conference in March 2010. And thank you for listening. Thanks, Ryan.